Hi, I'm Joanna Fantosi, Associate Editor with Nation's Restaurant News. Um, we are here with Al Hank, Senior Vice President of um, Operations at Famous Dave's. I'm here to talk a little bit about how the company has been um, uh, has been weathering the storm, so to speak, with COVID-19. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess just to uh, take it away. Um, so just to start off with, could you tell me kind of in your own words, um, Famous Dave's um, experience during COVID-19, if you could kind of give me us, give us a brief breakdown of the timeline over the past couple of months. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, th this COVID pandemic has, has obviously uh, provided unique challenges uh, to, to a lot of industries, specifically the restaurant industry. And it's caused us to think of how we operate uh, differently almost by the hour every single day. Uh, really, uh, when it started, when this all began, uh, the, the first couple of days, I mean, it was every hour, constant change, evolving, uh, and really figuring out how do we adapt to the current current situation that we're in dealt with. It really focused on how do we provide our services to our consumers and also protect our team members and our guests as they, as they try to interact with us in the various ways that they do. Um, I, I like to believe that we were ahead of the curve. Uh, we took action uh, rather quickly as things started uh, to change, obviously operating um, in over 30 different states and, and dealing, not having federal guidelines per se, and dealing with a lot of local municipalities and governments and their rules and regulations. Uh, we made the, the early, uh, early uh, decision on March 17th to close all of our dining rooms across the country uh, and also recommended that to our franchisees, which a vast majority followed suit. Um, and that is really where uh, the, the COVID process really started. Um, so we closed our dining rooms we immediately started working on the simplified reduced menu uh, to simplify operations, reduce head counts uh, in the restaurants so that we can have you know, safety precautions and keeping distancing in the restaurant. Our, our menu, we are a scratch kitchen, so our, our back of house operations are fairly complex with a ton of recipes and a ton of production. Uh, so we really tried to, to provide the, the core items that our guests come to us for and ensure that we have those readily available uh, and then and try to remove uh, move away from some of the other ones that are, weren't at high velocity or we didn't feel were as important to our guests at this time. So that's where it really started. Um, and, then, and then we started to look at our, our team members. I mean, that was really, uh, really important to us in the beginning. How do we provide the best solution during this time uh, in order to make sure that they were, or they were able to provide for their families? Uh, as we began to listen to all the rules and regulations coming forth, uh, we did make the decision early on to furlough a vast majority of our team members, um, which we did feel comfortable with because at the time, uh, you know, we felt like we couldn't provide for them. Uh, we weren't gonna be able to give them hours. We weren't gonna be able to uh, get their paychecks in full. And, and as we started to learn about, you know, the federal assistance with unemployment and then the local and state government unemployment, we felt that it was a good solution for them. Uh, I did hold conference calls uh, for all 1,700 of our hourly team members, invited them all in, spoke to them all directly all our restaurant level management, because uh, you know at the time we didn't know what it was going to be. Uh, revenues were falling off a cliff. <laughs> we uh, we were in survival mode. Uh, so uh, I think the biggest piece on our end was communication, not only to our guests but our internal our internal team members, making sure that they were educated what was going on and really providing the whys uh, of what we were doing. That's what. Okay. Uh, so at this point, um, what percentage um, of of your employees have been furloughed or laid off? Uh, right now, we're probably sitting around 85% Okay. At the restaurant level. Just we to have, get we have, what we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, over, you know, the last six weeks have been interesting. Um, you know, obviously the first week or two were, were, were tough, really tough. Um, and obviously the economy, everyone's scared, everyone doesn't know what to do. Uh, and then as, you know, that education piece, not only of our team members, like I spoke about, but our guests, as we began to inform them of what we were doing, precautions we were taking, uh, and then really starting to implement different, uh, uh, different uh, aspects in the restaurants. For instance, curbside, uh, you know, not having them enter the restaurant, making makeshift drive-throughs in the parking lots, uh, mm -hmm. providing uh, solutions to our, to our guests that they didn't necessarily have to interact, uh, no touch payments, and, and these other things, as you start to educate the consumer and the guests of what they can do in order to get their food and really feel safe as they do so, you know, we saw revenue start to increase, right? And, and as we began to do that, we were like, oh, okay, we need more people. <laughs> we need to be able to execute this because, you know, the worst thing in the world is you want to say, hey, we, you know, we have this opportunity for you. And then someone's sitting in the parking lot for 45 minutes. Right. Um, 
so we have uh, over the last four weeks we have been able to unfurlough uh, quite a few uh, team members and obviously it's been a conversation um, with, with them you know make sure they're comfortable uh, telling them all the things that we're doing all the precautions that we've taken you know we've provided masks to all our locations uh, you know team members want to use so obviously we have gloves readily available uh, plexiglass installed in some locations so we've done uh, we've taken precautions to make them feel safe and educate them and assuming that they mm -hmm. they're comfortable we get them back to the door mm -hmm. Great. Um, so, um, so speaking of kind of hiring people back and getting things back, back going again. So let's talk solutions. Um, prior to the uh, to the pandemic this year, uh, Famous Dates had come up a couple of rockier years um, of struggling by launching new initiatives, um, like we wrote about the uh, the new fast casual concept, uh, the ghost kitchens, um, and then later the introduction of the uh, new smaller restaurant design. Um, before we kind of dive into how those have been doing in the past couple of months, I would love to hear about kind of how they were resonating with consumers before uh, before uh, coronavirus began. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, to, to the point about the company in a, in a holistic view, you know, the last, we've been comp positive the last 10 of 11 quarters. A lot of the initiatives that we've been doing and, and implementing in our stores, uh, both our pre-existing formats and then our new formats have been, uh, you know, received extremely well from our guests. Um, Pre-COVID-19 and all the, the chaos that we're dealing with right now, uh, a lot of these initiatives, you know, a vast majority of them have worked extremely well. We launched our, our mobile app last year, uh, and we've seen an incredible amount of interaction um, and guests joining that and revenue generating from it. Um, we, we, we played around with that. You mentioned the, the smaller format concept. Uh, we have launched three of those um, in, in different iterations, uh, different menus, uh, different styles, different formats, uh, counter service, line service. Um, so we've done um, a fair amount of homework on that. And I think our biggest learning uh, throughout that process was education of the guests. And I know I kind of mentioned that earlier, but you know, being around for 25 years and being uh, the, the same concept everywhere, when you take a 7,000 square foot restaurant and a full service concept and you, you throw it into a 3,000 square foot uh, counter service style concept, especially when you're operating in, in an area where you may have operated before, uh, we have transitioned some of our you know, our restaurants that, that have closed and then transitioned them into this small format, it became, we realized very quickly, we needed to put somebody at the front door uh, and educating the guests as they walked in to introduce them to the service model, how it operated. Because a lot of people would walk in and they'd be like, you know, what do I do now? You know, like, do I sit here? Do I go to the counter? Uh, so that was really important for us as we, as we began down this concept. And then a lot of the menu innovations that we started to do, you know, we started to break down the menu, uh, debundle it, if you will. A lot of our menu historically has been um, combos and meals and they all come with sides. And we started to think about, you know, uh, price point entry levels and, and really being able to say, hey, you know, customize the menu however you want. Uh, you know, we're gonna give everything at an a la carte basis, let you, let you decide. And really what we started to focus on was, and where, where this all started was over, uh, over the course of the last um, three years, our business evolved from sitting roughly about 30% in off-premise, which off-premise is our takeout business and catering business. Uh, transition from 30% of revenue to 50% of revenue. Wow. So uh, obviously when you have that type of shift and the data is screaming at you, you got to take action. You got to do something different. Uh, so we started to realize that, you know, we didn't need to execute and operate in 7,000 square foot buildings. And obviously with all of the other headwinds that the restaurant industry is facing with increasing labor costs and, and, and operational or occupancy costs, um, you know, we, we had to make a change. So we said, well, if, 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 our, if our guests are telling us they want to interact with us differently, uh, you know, we need to make a shift here and we need to transition as we focus on the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, so as far as the way it was resonating with, uh, with our guests, I, I think it was an education piece, but at the same time, I think we, we learned a lot, especially in the first couple months of, of executing it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with the three different models, what it allows us to do is provide flexibility, not only to ourselves, but our franchisees, because the, the location or the markets were really dictating what model we were opening. We have one that is bar centric, and we built, we built that in uh, Minneapolis, uh, which is a neighborhood that calls for that, uh, mm -hmm. and it's been extremely successful. Um, and then, you know, we've also built a very, very, very counter style service model where people are walking in, placing their order, getting it right then and there, and then either sitting down or leaving. So we have flexibility out there. Yeah, so they can look different. It doesn't have to be kind of like a cookie cutter format then. No, I, I mean, there's some brand elements that we absolutely include, like colors and, and certain different pieces of decor and stuff that we wanted to feel true to a, a famous Dave's. But uh, we've been working on a, on a large uh, refresh investment as well in our corporate system and also in the franchise system. And, 
you know, we're, we're looking to evolve and change, you know, in 25 years, you gotta, you gotta do something differently. Uh, and we want to, you know, we want to get to it the times we want to be a, 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 the modern barbecue, if you will. Um, and we, we've done a lot of this work in our Arizona market. Uh, we started in our Minneapolis market and in our Colorado market and a lot of, a lot of new element and, and decor changes that we've been in the new color schemes and new decor. Uh, so we're excited for it. Very excited. Great. Um, so um, then could you kind of break down how each of these kind of new ideas and, and your evolution to become more of a modern barbecue uh, place has influenced uh, your coronavirus game plan and results, either in a positive or negative way or both? Yeah, sure. So I think, um, you know, with, with the testing of these newer concepts, and really we've been technology focused for the last two years, mm -hmm. very heavily investing a uh, time, energy, um, and capital into this space. And, and what we've you know, that stems from kiosks and curbside, like I talked about, our mobile app, um, and all of these different uh, technology solutions for the restaurant. And we, we were focused on that, not only for our new service or counter service style restaurants, our 3000 square foot prototypes that we've been working on, but also implementing those into our full service restaurants. And how do we change and evolve that experience for our guests there? What that did was kind of put us as a leg up, because, uh, uh, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic starts and it's, we start, you know, again, by the hour, we're on conference calls all hours through the night. And it's like, okay, how are we going to react tomorrow? Uh, and you think, look at things at curbside, uh, no touch payment, mobile payment solutions, tablets, kiosks, um, you know, all of these, these different things that we'd been working on, it became a turnkey solution. We were, a, we already had it identified. We had our SOPs outlined. We didn't have to develop anything. It just became, okay, instead of it being in five restaurants, it's now going to be in 130 restaurants tomorrow uh, and providing those solutions and really our, our partners and our vendors were, were fantastic during it because obviously everything was about speed right how quick can we get this out to the field how quickly can we make these changes uh, but you know I feel like we were very well prepared uh, for I mean, not that anyone can be prepared necessarily for something like this um, but just the the research the time and effort we had spent in testing and, and ideating around these uh, different uh, solutions, we, we had them mapped out. It was just about deployment. We didn't have to figure it out. Great. Um, so what we're seeing is that, you know, restaurants with delivery conscious strategies and smaller footprints are the, or the ability to operate with fewer physical restaurants are, I mean, it's sort of a weird way of thinking of it, but are winning um, and are doing better in, in these past like six weeks or so. I mean, do you agree with that? Do you feel like you kind of have a leg up in that way of being kind of, you've been more focused on, on, the, on that off-premise category? Yeah, I, I think when you look at the restaurant uh, industry in general, if I was a fine dining white tablecloth restaurant, I probably wouldn't be as prepared uh, as some of the restaurants. There, there absolutely is a competitive advantage if you're if you're in that space, and I like to think that we were in that space, even though a vast majority of our restaurants are, just because of our unique, um, you know, off-premise revenue source. It's just been there forever, and us being able to capitalize on it. What I think is interesting is the reason why there's a leg up is because all of the other restaurants are now trying to become those restaurants overnight, uh, yeah. and it's not that easy. Um, you know, a lot of these people don't stock to go supplies like we do. They don't have the packaging solutions. They don't have negotiated contracts. They don't have vendors that they can, you know. Uh, turnkey solutions. Um, but I think what I've seen is even the restaurants that that, that haven't been, uh, you know, quote unquote, in that space prior, um, they've adapted really quickly, um, you know, and I've gotten plenty of phone calls from from industry friends and other people, you know, asking for, you know, uh, solutions and how do you do this? And, and we're all about it. We want to help the industry in any way, shape or form that we can. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, uh, you know, again, a lot of the stuff that we had been working on, uh, including, you know, the menu work and all the recipe work and simplifying and and really what, what became apparent very early on was, um, you know, all the channels that we had been focusing, social and digital channels and, and being able to market and reach those consumers uh, really made us in that first, that second week, really, um, you know, I'll give you an example, um, you know, uh, forever in our menu, our all American barbecue feast has been a staple. It's this platter, it serves four to six family style. And, and I remember very early on in a marketing call, and it, cause it happened to me the night prior when my family was ordering out and I was getting really tired of asking everybody what they wanted and sitting there for 40 minutes and saying, Oh man. And this one, I don't know. And they're looking at the menu and, you're, and it's just a process. So we very quickly realized that, you know, given the success of our all American barbecue piece, however, forever long on our menu, we probably needed to ideate and come up with some more family packs and some more uh, family to go meals. And it was just a simple one click, you know, this feeds four people. It's got everything I want. And the minute we deployed that, and the minute we, we marketed it, it went, you know, 
skyrocketed. The success was, so it very, it became very apparent to us early on that, you know, we needed to take some of our core menu items right now, but just package them differently and make it more convenient for our consumer, our guests, uh, for them to be able to just quickly interact with us and get the solution that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so for you, like speaking of, um, the, on the other side of the coin, uh, what has been the most challenging aspect of sort of surviving as, as this mid-sized casual dining uh, chain and also sometimes counter service uh, chain in these unusual circumstances? I, I think it's change. Um, it, it's been every day. Um, you know, granted, it, it's, it's slowed down a little bit over the last week or two as we I quote unquote stabilized. But I, the minute I would say that we felt somewhat I don't want to say stable because I don't feel stable really in the environment that yeah. we're in. But uh, the, when when things became the norm, if you will, three weeks in, where you know we're, we're talking daily with our general managers and all of our operations teams and our franchisees, and we got to this sense of like, okay, this is our norm, and here's where we're operating. But then immediately the next day, the conversation began to shift. Okay, well, what's the next new norm uh, as the economy begins to open back up? As as you start reading about all of the local uh, mandates and restrictions. Is it disposable menus? Is it sanitizers on tables? Is it 50% um, occupancy? Are we spacing out tables? Are we, so as soon as we felt like we had gotten to a sense of normalcy in our day-to-day -day operations, it then it would automatically shift to that conversation. So I think the most challenging thing is the fear of the unknown, the, the, the lack of uh, timelines, the lack of um, certainty and being able, that, that's been our biggest challenge. And, and, but at the same time, it's been the most rewarding because I've been able to watch you know, my team be just incredible uh, during the time. Both our, our frontline workers in the, in the stores, our general managers, our assistant managers, and our hourly team members. I mean, just their, their morale, their, their thought process right now, what they're providing in their communities and being able to, oh, I'm, I get constant texts and emails and phone calls and they're at this hospital and they're here and they're there. And I you know and I see a lot of people posting that all over the place and you know, we haven't necessarily taken that avenue, but I mean, just what they're, they're, their mindset of like they need to get it done has been incredible. So while it's challenging from a business perspective, uh, I, I would tell you it's been extremely rewarding for myself and, and our executive team mm -hmm. as we watch uh, what the what our team has been able to accomplish. It's been incredible. Yeah, and and you mentioned the the kind of forward thinking strategies, and obviously there's a lot of question marks. But at this point. Um, what are you thinking of as as a forward thinking strategy in like the next few months or the next six months or a year as the as the country and the economy continues to recover? Yeah, sure. Um, we, we've been diligently working on this. Um, we're looking at mobile solutions for menus, um, you know, uh, web web based menus uh, with you know communication on tabletops for people to be able to uh, just at their at their comfort level with their own devices be able to navigate menus, reduce the interactions table side. Obviously, if a guest is looking to come into a dining room, they're looking for an experience, but we want to be able to provide a, uh, an experience that is safe and not to say that a server coming to a table and taking an order is unsafe, but we want to give the flexibility, the optionality to the guests for what, they, what their level of comfort is. Uh, we've, we've talked about disposable menus. We've already mocked those and have the templates up and deploying those to the restaurants, sanitizer stations uh, inside the restaurants, spacing of the tables inside of the restaurants. And also something that we're working on, which I, which I really, really like and I think is unique, is, is the ability to pre-order um, for your restaurant experience. Uh, we've, we've tapped a solution uh, with one of our existing partners that will allow us to communicate to guests where they can get with their family, uh, whether they're in the same house or not, be able to order on the same order, if you will, uh, for multiple devices, be able to pre-place their order. And when they come into the restaurant, all they're telling us is their name. And then we're identifying... Uh, the host will communicate the table number that they're sat at. And then really all we're doing is really dropping off the food, you know, and supplementing whatever they need uh, and drinks, et cetera. So we think that that's going to provide a unique solution to our guests. Uh, on the, on the off-premise side, uh, we've had, uh, we've, we put out what we call a uh, parking lot hosts or a curbside attendant, if you will. We have tents and, and a mobile host stand out there, walkie talkies, uh, mobile payment solutions. So we, we are going to continue on uh, with our, uh, our off, our outside restaurant, if you will. And, you know, we've, we've redone our parking lots, all new parking signs. We have numbered spots. So that, that is going to continue uh, for, for quite some time, as I predict. We're going to still try to limit the traffic in the restaurant, especially being able to provide the ones who want to come in for the in-restaurant experience uh, and continue to utilize our off-premise strategy in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so as kind of a final wrapping up thing, what do you, what would you say is the number one thing that you've learned about, about how you've had to pivot uh, your operational strategy at this time? There's nothing my team can't do. <laughs> um, I know that sounds um, uh, corny maybe, but uh, you know, I've always been very proud of my team. Um, and, and honestly, I, I'm thankful to our, our, our loyal guests. Um, you know, they, they've, they've continued to support us. We've gotten, uh, you know, thousands of emails and, and social posts and just the, the, the sincere gratitude um, that they've shown us. Uh, and just even with precautionary measures that we've taken that not, not aren't necessarily mandated, but uh, something that we felt that was important as an executive team to launch at our stores. And quite frankly, I would tell you, you know, a vast majority of the ideas have come from our operators. I mean, communication has been so critical and we, we, we pride ourselves on that, quite frankly. I, I believe in inclusive, inclusion of our operators and making sure that their voice is heard and, and impactful. Um, but they've had some really great ideas uh, and things where, I'm, you know, I've almost thought to myself, like, well, how did I not think of that? But um, they've been incredible. So I think, you know, the biggest learning, I mean, yeah, we've learned about menu. We've learned about technology. We've learned about, uh, you know, different, you know, solutions that we've provided. But I think the most rewarding or most impactful thing that I'm going to come out of this is really how impactful my team can be in a very short amount of time. And I, 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 if anything, this just solidifies that I know there's nothing we can't do as, as an organization. And as I look, as I look at our history over, like I was mentioning the, the 10 of the last 11 quarters and really the success we've had, you know, uh, as a, as barbecue holdings, uh, you know, we, we just acquired Granite city, um, right. as a uh, acquisition. We, we also acquired a single unit concept, uh, Real Urban Barbecue uh, in Vernon Hills. We also launched uh, Clark Crew Barbecue in Oklahoma City at the end of last year. Uh, so as we, we've really grown uh, tremendously over the last four or five months. And you could probably argue not the greatest time for an acquisition um, of some restaurant concepts. However, uh, just with the core foundation of our team, what we've been able to accomplish throughout this pandemic and just our growth and, and the success we've had over the 10, I, I couldn't be more excited about the next couple of years of life for our organization. Yeah, and how have those uh, newly uh, newly acquired restaurants been been doing operationally lately? Yeah, our Clark Crew Barbecue Restaurant in Oklahoma City has, when it opened its doors, I mean, they practically broke them down. Um, it has been incredibly successful for us. Travis Clark is uh, a world-renowned pitmaster. He's he's a genius, um, and he's got a heck of a following there in Oklahoma City. They they he's a god, if you will. Um, so, you know, we've been able to implement all of our, uh, obviously, solutions that we've had on the off-premise side and just put those into Clark Crew, very turnkey solutions, and we've been able to execute very well. Uh, our Vernon Hills uh, Real Urban Barbecue um, concept in Vernon Hills, Illinois, uh, has been same deal. Um, we've been able to implement a lot of those things. We, we took that over basically the week that this pandemic started, so that was really interesting, uh, getting, you know, um, getting acquainted with the with the concept and obviously we had done our homework but working with their operations team it's been great and then granite city which is really you know a, a dine-in centric restaurant you know not much of an off-premise uh, uh foundation there but we've been able to quickly adapt learn from their team about their menu uh obviously all of their operators came over during the uh, transition so we, it's been really a, a team effort to to partner with them learn about their menu simplify it and then also implement technology and, and our off-premise solutions for them, and they've been able to reach uh, and, and start performing really well. It was maybe a little bit slower to, to kick off where, you know, people knew Famous Dave's as an off-premise takeout solution already, but educating, you know, uh, the guests on the Granite City side uh, was something we had to work on over the first week or two, but after we got that going and we got the solutions implemented, um, you know, it, it turned out to be successful for us, so we've been doing very well. Great. Okay, I think that then that's all the questions I have. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much.